हे गाइस व्हाट्स अप आई एम नीलेष बर्मन एंड वेलकम टू माय चैनल इन दिस एडिशन ऑफ वीडियो वी विल स्टडी इन ब्रीफ अबाउट पार्लियामेंट्री एंड प्रेसिडेंशियल फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट सो वी बिगिन विद पार्लियामेंट्री फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट सिंस गवर्नमेंट्स हैव बीन क्लासिफाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द पॉलिटिकल एग्जीक्यूटिव विद द लेजिस्लेटिव एग्जीक्यूटिव इफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव इज आंसरेबल एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू द लेजिस्लेचर इट इज कॉल्ड कैबिनेट फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट और पार्लियामेंट्री फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट now we see the characteristics of parliamentary form of government the first one is head of the state in this system nominal head is president and he is considered the first citizen of the state all the actions of government are taken in the name of president theoretically all the power belong to him under the constitution in this system real head is prime minister prime minister of the state and all the powers of president are exercised by council of ministers headed by prime minister second characteristic is there is close collaboration between the executive and the legislature which leads to smooth functioning of the government and avoid unnecessary confrontation among them in this system executive and legislature work in close collaboration the members of council of ministers are the members of legislature in fact the council of ministers drawn from legislature the president can summon the legislature and gives his assent to the bills passed by the legislature to make them laws the third characteristic is responsibility of the executive the executive in a parliamentary system is responsible to the legislature for all its actions the ministers are answerable to the parliament in general and responsible to the lok sabha in particular the council of ministers can remains in office as long as they enjoy the support and confidence of the lok sabha the legislature has the right to seek detailed information about the working of the government from the ministers which they cannot refuse to provide in reality it is the council of ministers who informs working of the government to the legislature the fourth characteristic is collective responsibility all the ministers of the council of ministers works as a team they take decisions in common after their meeting it is the principle that all ministers have to agree on a particular decision in other words the minister who do not agree with the decision of council of ministers have to give resignation so that he can oppose that on the floor of the legislature the fifth characteristic is political homogeneity the members of council of ministers should belong to a single political party and remain committed to a definite ideology to remain a homogeneous body six characteristics is leadership of prime ministers the accepted norm of the parliamentary form of government is the leadership of the prime minister the process of forming of council of ministers is begin with the appointment of the prime minister the president appoints the members of the council of ministers on advice and recommendations of prime minister he can dismiss any ministers any time without assigning any reason his resignation leads to the resignation of council of ministers as a whole automatically after every cabinet meeting he meets president on behalf of council of ministers to inform him of the decisions taken now we will talk about the demerits of parliamentary form of government in this form of government there is no separation of powers when government has a good majority second is that unqualified legislators the third demerit is instability because in this form of government uh, the it often seems that a single political party does not get majority clear majority resulting in coalition government which is often unstable now in and also the ministers in this form of government are only from ruling party fifth is failure to take a prompt decision because the tenure of minist- ministers is not fixed the sixth demerit, demerit is party politics seventh is controlled by the bureaucracy now we see the presidential form of government in a presidential system the head of the government leads an executive that is distinct from legislature 
in this system of government the president president is directly elected by the people and answerable to the voters only through separate election from that of legislature here the head of the government and head of the state is one and the same also the executive is not responsible to the legislature now we see the merits or characteristics of presidential form of government so first one is separation of powers since due to the separation of powers efficiency is always there efficiency of administration is greatly enhanced since the three arms of the government are independent of each other the legislative executive and judiciary branches serve different terms of office and different constituencies the second merit is expert government since the executive need not to be from legislatures the president can choose experts in various fields to head relevant departments or ministries this will make sure that the people who are capable and knowledgeable form part of the government the third merit is stability this type of government is stable since the term of the president is fixed and not subject to majority support in the legislative he need not worry about losing the government there is no danger of a sudden fall of government there is no political pressure the fourth is less influence of the party system in this form of uh, government political parties do not attempt to dislodge the government since the tenure is fixed now we see the demerits of presidential form of government the first one is less responsible executive since the legislature has no hold over the executive and the president president the head of the government can turn authority authoritarian second demerit is there is always deadlock between executive and legislature the third one is rigid government it lacks flexibility fourth is spoil system since the president may choose executive from his her relatives or friends etc now we compare the presidential and parliamentary form of government on the basis of some uh, some points so first one is executive in parliamentary form there is dual executive and in presidential form of government there, there is single executive accountability so in parliamentary form of government executive is accountable to legislature and in presidential form of government executive not accountable to legislature now ministers only in president in parliamentary form of government the ministers can be only from among mps uh, while on the in the presidential form of government people outside the legislature can be appointed now dis dissolution of lower house pm can dissolve before the expiry of the term in parliamentary form of government while in presidential form of government president cannot dissolve the legislature now if we talk in respect of tenure then in parliamentary form of government the tenure is not fixed generally there is 5 years but not fixed and in presidential form of government the tenure of the government is fixed so friends it is all about in brief about the parliamentary and presidential form of government if you like the video then please hit the like button and uh, do mention in comment and if you want video of these notes then please visit description box the link is there and thank you for visiting